humanity. Look how far you fall. Greetings, programs, and welcome to Pop Culture Therapy. I'm your host, Loki. Charlie's Angels director Elizabeth Banks blamed men for box office failure nearly a week before the film hit theaters. Surprise, surprise, surprise. This is systemic, the way this is working. And it's something I have noticed that I really hit on today. The reason why we are seeing so many remakes is because they don't want to take responsibility for their failures. You see, if they made something new and it failed, well, it's on them, isn't it? If they make a remake, if they remake a movie and the fans don't like it, well, that's the fans' fault, isn't it? So all these sequels we've been seeing all these remakes we've been seeing, every time they flop, the fans get blamed, especially male fans. This woman, Elizabeth Banks, specifically stated this was a feminist movie for women. Men don't need to go see it. Men don't need to comment on it. Men don't need to review it because it's for women. It's not for you. But men are certainly going to take the blame for it, aren't they? So let's see what we got here. Charlie's Angels director Elizabeth Banks blamed men for the film's box office failure nearly a week before the film hit theaters. In an interview with Australia's Herald Sun, Banks spoke on why the film needs to make money and who is to blame if it doesn't. She stated, look, people have to buy tickets to this movie, you hear? This movie has to make money, she added. If this movie doesn't make money, it reinforces a stereotype in Hollywood that men don't go see women do action movies. Bullshit. She brings up Wonder Woman here in a minute. Now, Wonder Woman, the only reason why anybody went and saw Wonder Woman was because it was leading into Justice League. Have we forgotten Alita? Because I tell you what, Alita's a badass movie. I loved Alita. I thought Alita was a kick-ass movie. Nothing led into that, did it? it it's, it's the same shit we're hearing over and over. Banks then bemoaned men's taste in films and specifically pointed out Wonder Woman, saying men only went to see it because it was a precursor to Justice League. No. No, Elizabeth. Men went and saw it because when Wonder Woman dropped in Batman vs. Superman, it was badass. There wasn't anybody that left that theater that wasn't humming because that was the most kick-ass part of that entire movie. It was all eh, meh until Wonder Woman dropped in and kicked some ass. That was the best part of the entire movie. That was the only one of the only parts of that movie that was worth seeing was the Wonder Woman part. So, apparently, she's quoted as saying, they'll go and see a comic book movie with Wonder Woman and Captain Marvel. Nope, didn't go see Captain Marvel. Because that's a male genre. So, even though those movies are about women, they put them in the context of feeding the larger comic book world. So, it's all about, yes, you're watching a Wonder Woman movie, but we're setting up three other characters, or we're setting up Justice League. No, this is all a big fat excuse that's all it is is a big fat excuse because your movie bombed why did your movie bomb because you told people not to go see it this movie isn't for you thank you very much you told people not to go see your movie and the more people do that the more we're not going to go see your movie 
As for why she believes the film needs to make money, it's all about power for banks, and she wants it. I'm sure she does. By the way, I'm happy for the characters to have box office success, but we need more women's voices supported with money, because that's the power. The power is in the money. Well, <laughs> you just lost a lot of power, because your film sucked. That's why your film sucked. Because that's all you were worried about, is power and money. You didn't go into that movie to make a kick-ass Charlie's Angels movie. You went into that movie to grab power and grab money. And look what it got you. She would reinforce this view by stating that she and those like her need to take control of Hollywood. I bet they really do feel that way too. I bet you it's our turn. It's our time. It's our time now. I bet you that's exactly what she said. That said, we're in charge of Hollywood. We're the stars. We can do it. We have to take control of this. And I feel like I'm part of a new class. A new class. A higher class. That feels the same way. Like, it's our time now. <laughs> See? It's our time. It's ours. It's our time now. In a more recent interview with the Wall Street Journal... Banks would also seemingly target superhero movies, this time Spider-Man, addressing concerns that audiences are not interested in more reboots. Banks stated, You've had like 37 Spider-Man movies and you're not complaining, like today. There have only been 7 Spider-Man movies, not 37. She would then play the victim card, stating, I think women are allowed to have one or two action franchises every 17 years. <laughs> I feel totally fine with that. Like, oh my God, uh, only 17 years or so. These statements are not the first time Banks has decided to make Charlie's Angels about gender. Back in July, the director and actress told Collider that the message of her film was to believe women. One of the statements this movie makes is that you should probably believe women, all women, I'm sure. We have as much validity in what we're feeling and how we want to go about living in the world, being in the world, and that was really important to me, that we feel like, like totally, we had characters that were being taken seriously, you know, like totally, and given a chance to live their best life. Oh my God, that is like so retro. She would then detail that she specifically wanted women to go see the film specifically wanted women to go see the film. Screw the guys. Girls, come see this movie. And that they were the target audience. When we were casting the movie, I wanted really fresh faces. I wanted a diverse cast. It's important that women, the audience for this movie, <laughs> the audience, keywords are right there, the audience for this movie, and none of them showed up, sees themselves in some part of this movie. I think that's really important. I want the audience to feel a sense of ownership over the film. Oh, they owned it, all right. That they could be in this movie. That they could live in this world. It's a real message. It's a movie that I want to entertain all audiences. No, 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 no. You don't get to do that. Women audiences. Not all audiences. Women audiences. But I did want to make something that felt important to women, especially young girls. Lot of virtue signaling there. Mm -mm -mm. Quite tasty now that it's bombed, isn't it? It's quite odd that she would complain about men not going to see the film when she specifically noted that women were the audience for the film. <laughs> I love, oh, I love it. I love bounding in the comics. Banks was not the only one to politicize Charlie's Angels. Kristen Stewart referred to the film as woke. God, like, it's so funny, you know? I know if I say this a certain way, I know that this will be written down, like totally, but it's not such a bad thing. It's kind of like the woke version. Star Trek Picard actor Patrick Stewart almost made the film about gender during an appearance at Paris Comic Con. In two weeks time, there's a new Charlie's Angels movie, movie opening. The line will be drawn here, this far, no further. And if you want to see something about female empowerment, I have nothing else to say. <laughs> Charlie's Angels is currently in theaters. The film made an estimated $8.7 at the domestic box office and $19.3 at the international box office, 
for an opening week in total of $27.9 million. You know, I could say it. I could. You can get woke, go broke, but it's even worse than that because they're hiding. All of these people are hiding behind remakes, rehashes, sequels that won't go anywhere, all because they don't want their own IP to fail. Because if their own IP fails, well, that's on them. If they make a remake and nobody likes it, that's all on us. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you do, give me a thumbs up. Um, if you like my channel, please subscribe. Leave a comment down in the comment section. Let me know guys, what you guys think, and I will catch you all on the next Pop Culture Therapy.